Mm-hmm. And we are live. Linda Solbrig. Is that pronounced correctly, Solbrig? Yeah, absolutely. Linda Solbrig. in the house. Dr. Linda Solbrig, PhD, chef turned clinical psychologist. I have to just brag, everyone who's watching this, Linda went off to become a chef. You studied in Australia. I did, yeah. And then came back and worked for Rick Stein in Cornwall. Absolutely. In Patso in Cornwall, where I still live now. <laughs> and then thought, I don't know, I feel like a challenge. So when it became not just a normal clinical psychologist, but went even further and, and did a PhD, what on earth? <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, there, there were loads of sort of um, patterns of um, that I observed in, in the shift work and in my colleagues all around me from obesity to drinking heavily to drug use to coping with stress and mental health issues arrive. And I just thought, you know, I want to somehow make a difference and, and learn about how to address those things productively. And that's how I got into intervention development and into developing fit. That's crazy. Well, that's awesome. I'm so glad you've joined us. So for all of you who've tuned in, thank you very much. Linda has been studying all, all, all kinds of exciting things and most recently invented or at least did your PhD on functional imagery training. And, yes, in and the context which, of which, weight management. Yes, in the context of weight management. As I understand it, it's connected to uh, what was the thing we were talking about before we came uh, Motivational interviewing. Okay. So Absolutely, can you, yeah. Yeah. Can you give us just the definition of, of what motivational interviewing is, why it exists, when we would use it, and then we can go into a bit more detail. So motivational interviewing is a really well established way of coaching, counseling people, a very clever way of using language that is empathic, supportive and collaborative. And there's always that analogy. You're dancing with your patient, with your client. You're not wrestling. It's not something we apply to people, but we expect that they are an expert in their own lives and we empathically draw out with their motivations for the behavior changes that they desire. They're not our motivations. They are within the person and we just help them to crystallize it better, to vocalize change, the need, the desire to do that. And um, yeah, this is uh, an intervention championed by Miller and Rolnick. Um, and I think it started in the 1980s in the USA and comes out of the field of addiction, but it's applicable to numerous behaviors. Its applications are literally athletes, education, health behaviors, and there are about 1,500 published successful trials of MI. It's the vehicle we use, that way of speaking to someone and the structure of MI in functional imagery training. And all we do is we very elegantly and effectively weave in the imagery into that motivational interview to put motivational interviewing on steroids. Yes. And and what I understand from, well, I think I read your study actually, and it said that you got, <laughs> that, you, that your control group did just standard motivational interviewing, and then yes. you used functional imagery training and you had results that were five times better, so like 500% better results using functional imagery training, like this bolt-on. Five times more weight loss in the randomized controlled trial. Yes, absolutely. And they got the same intervention, basically. The only difference was the imagery. And the reason for that is that imagery is much more emotive than just verbally discussing or considering change thinking. So that's why I mean by the steroids. We're just pumping up the volume on the motivation and the confidence there. And what I'm embarrassed to um, announce, but it is true, is that you didn't even prescribe a diet. You just told No, them. we didn't. No, absolutely not. We didn't give any dietary advice or um, a prescribed regimen of exercise. No, people were, you know, they, they are already experts in their own lives. They know what's going on. Um, they have tried many times before. So if anything, we're rephrasing, we're reframing that you know, succession of failures as a building of a toolbox, gaining great insight into yourself and actually succeeding, eventually dipping into that. And we can do that using motivational interviewing and then adding the imagery and making it functional imagery training. But I don't want anybody to be discouraged if you're a dietitian or nutritionist or anybody who, you with your books and your program, you can use FIT really successfully to boost the engagement, to boost the motivation. You know, sometimes people have to do some red changes you know they might have to lose weight for surgery they might need to improve their blood results they need that level of education and something wholly new and then having fit really helps them to stick to that you know 
and there was a recent paper out that um, that looked at ultra marathon runners, and they were five times more likely to actually complete an ultra marathon using Fit rather than MI. And these were people who were trained up from couch potato all the way to marathon runners. So again, wow. you can use it alongside a prescribed regime just to boost okay. the motivation. But what's great to know is that it's not just used for like a health intervention. It can also be used no. to enhance performance. Which Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Super cool. Anything All right. you want. <laughs> so we've heard, well, I just pushed the hydraulic thing out of my chair. Just hang on. <laughs> <laughs> so let's let's go. So I've got a goal I've been working on and yep. I've I haven't even told you what it is, and you're going to oh. walk us a. I keep my my uh, demo, and then we're going to put it on steroids and and less in the functional imagery training. So Absolutely. I'm. I'm ready. Well, let's, That's let's great. So, so just to um, make sure that people understand, this is also part of fit this MI discussion, but we then repeat it with the imagery. So, Jono, what have you come in to talk to me today about? What what's going on? So, I have this goal. Okay, I emailed my entire database about it a year and two months ago, I think, and and so that's 120,000 people. And I was and and what I said was, I'm going to use all the techniques that we use in coaching, uh, yeah. in our coaching programs to set the yeah. goal, to stay the course or whatever. But I'm going to break a, a 90 half marathon. Um, right. and, and yeah, in the past, it's, it's a big deal for me is because in the past I've done stuff that was um, extreme because I, I used to drink and party quite hard. And then it was just impressive that I could do that partying and then still just finish the race. But I'd never taken an event seriously and try to actually get a great time. Now, yeah. at 36, I'm getting a little, you know, it's had a hard 20s to deal with, and now it's giving up from time to time when I try and push myself. But I really want to make it happen. I want to get this up 90. I want to prove to my mailing list that it's possible, and also I feel pretty good if I get it done. So that's the goal. So it's important not to only prove to your mailing list, but also to get your body in the kind of shape that you want it to be in, because you said sometimes your body gives up on you, even if you're trying to get that to that level of performance. Correct. Okay, so there's not only the external pressure, but we have some internal motivation there to get things going. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like to be strong. Sure. And if you think about how things are now, what's bothering you about this the most? If you had to put down like a real downside of not having cracked that yet, what's niggling away? What's bothering you the most? And when would you notice that in your day? Uh, I would say that it's um, it's like so. There's a little bit of sh- taken quite a while now. It's been over a year, uh, so it's it bothers me that I haven't been able to to like uh, you know hold the imaginary trophy up. Um, and and look, I I did get hit with with COVID twice, so have been like um, hindrances on the on the fitness. But I would just say it's 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 frustrating that it's lingering actually and it's and it's dragging on and uh and yeah so like i'm starting it's starting to be more and more of, of a failure even though i haven't let it go yeah okay. but you haven't let it go it sort of feels like you could almost let it go if you stay in the state where you are now and when you're not making a good start at it again even though i mean i must say you know persevering through illness and so on you know you've already done so well so you know how do you feel about that knowing that you've kept going I mean, I do feel cheesy. I'm like sweating here. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, look, I, I do. I am quite proud of myself that it still actually is a goal. Um, I must say, I was, but I was quite heartbroken both times I got, um, I got COVID because I was on such a good wicket, and then and then back, and you know, you're just like, like, oh, I can't believe this because it's it's um, it's hard. It's like hard work to get that fit, and then to have a break or five week break is. You know, it's soul destroying. It's really frustrating. Yes. Absolutely. And you were saying just now, okay, so that, you know, that moment of holding the trophy and being sad about that being further away and sort of almost slipping. But I'm just wondering, is that sort of the number one motivation? Or what other things, if you think about the future, a future where you might achieve that, um, what what other things will will you feel, will you know when you get there? What is important for you? just holding that trophy i assume there's other bits that go along with that so what would it mean for your life if you achieved that 
outside of just holding the trophy and having that achievement yeah. moment. Yeah, look, I mean, the external validation thing aside, I think for myself, I really get thrills from from achieving things that I don't think are possible. And it's kind of like a little bit, of, it's embedded in my identity. And so, and like, I haven't done that in quite a while. And, and, and but when I do, it, I get like a high for like a year. <laughs> so I don't, oh, I don't, yeah, yeah, it's very long, you know, it feel, and it feels great. And, and I use that to myself in other areas as well. And, and I use it to motivate people. It's like, so it's, it's, I both use, I use it internally and externally. It's like, it's like having ammo, um, in, in the weapon I use to motivate everybody, <laughs> including myself. So it, it, so it would, it would be very inspiring to, if I just compare it to another, I did a very big swim about seven years ago. And I just remember that feeling afterwards and for, for, three years afterwards, I just, I went through some tough stuff and I was able to just say, you know what, you, you totally smash the thing. You can get through this. Um, so yeah, there is a, a long, I don't think hangover is the right word because it's negative, but it's like a ring, a lasting high, which I really love. Yeah. Absolutely. So it's hugely important, actually, you will filter into every single part that makes you you and that you will use in your life for your business, your personal motivation, your own physical health, knowing that you can do it, the external pressure from your fans and your mailing list, but also to, you know, go into new ventures and business and actually to keep like that mojo up and going for at least a year will sort of permeate into those layers. So, um, what I want to do now is this is the sort of where motivational interviewing would would sort of um, stop for a moment. We would talk about first steps of how you might get there. But what I would like to do is bring in a bit of fit now and just amplify that why the change is important and all those, you know, imagining all those good things in a moment. But we need to start, unfortunately, with a little bit of discomfort just to get us going. So what I would like you to do is I've I've just asked you to describe a real downside of where you are now and how that feels and when you might notice that in your day. So we'd like you to do now an imagery is actually to just listen to my neutral prompts and guidance and build that picture up as vividly as you can. Now, I know we haven't done the lemon exercise, so you're just going to have to jump in cold, the lemon exercise we normally do to sort of emphasize to people through a neutral example of what we mean by mental imagery. But I think you've read up and you're already clued on and you can run with this. Yeah, I'll do my bit. (laughs) (laughs) So basically here, you know, try and use all your senses and make it like a real movie in your head but looking out through your own eyes at the world as you're going about the things you're doing. So I'm going to guide you through a little bit of negative imagery, and then I'm going to guide you through some positive imagery in in real stark contrast to that negative, okay? So to build the motivation for that future you, so to speak. So if you go into your imagery mode, that could be gazing ahead, that could be closing your eyes for a moment, and just Mm -hmm. take a deep breath and just follow my neutral prompts. Okay. Okay, so while you're in your imagination space, I would like you to imagine a day where you're noticing that those things that you want to make happen are just not going ahead yet. You know, imagine when you would notice that that's bothering you, where you are when you're noticing that. Who's around you? Or are you on your own? What's the quality of the light where you're standing as you're examining those dissatisfactory feelings? How does the ground feel under your feet? Is there maybe a distinct taste that comes with those moments in your mouth? How do you feel in your own skin as you're noticing that downside? And then I'm not going to keep you there very long, but just for a moment, spin that ahead a few months into the future. Let's imagine nothing has changed and you still haven't gotten going. How does that moment you just imagine evolve then? Are there more such moments? Does the frequency increase? Does it bother you more? What can you see? happening to you 
and maybe if you can in a year's time and nothing has changed you haven't made this moment happen unfortunately you haven't achieved it how do you feel then in your own skin standing in that same spot noticing that nothing has changed and if i can just bring you back quite quickly john i'm sorry can you come back to me Sorry, so interrupted. Yeah. I saw you. Because <laughs> everyone was just looking at the top of my head. I was like, Whoo! that's terrible. <laughs> How did you feel about that? How did that feel? What happened? Yeah, it, it was terrible. You know, uh, I mean, I can talk about what it felt like. Like, um, I mean, interestingly, I connected a lot with anger. I was like, angry and and then i thought about they had this like wanting to kick a wall and just being like fuck you know <laughs> and then uh and then when you said roll it out for six months i was like no i can't even i can't imagine I was thinking about, yeah i was thinking about being at my family christmas reflect on the year together and i was thinking like if i have to sit there and like there's this thing still lingering you know be yeah that real cloud yeah, and all grumpy. Sad okay. Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like it was pretty vivid already, so that's great. So you're really running with it. So well yeah. done. And I'm sorry I had to do this, but tw there's about 20 years of research by Gabrielle Ettingen that shows that we need the contrast to get going. Otherwise, it just sure. becomes daydreaming. And if you don't acknowledge the obstacles and the difficulty, then you're not going to move forward. Okay. So sure. what I'd like you to do now is you've already expressed some super important things about how life will be, at least for the year following, if you do achieve that, that running goal. So um, can you just summarize for me, and this is very MI again, can you just summarize for me the key aspects once more of how life will change for that least when you've achieved your goal, right following those big draws? Uh well, so, I mean, I'd be energized, emotionally energized. Right. Would, I mean, I, that pretty much sums it up. <laughs> energized, energized and inspired would be the two big words that show up for me. I just wanted to prompt you a little bit in the right direction for the next imagery exercise. So now I want to do the same imagery exercise, but with a future where something has changed. But we're starting with the very immediate changes that you might notice. So if you go back into imagery mode, Jono, sorry to rush you, we're, we're, on, we're on life, so we've got to do this a bit faster. We don't have that much time for reflection. That's but if fine. you go into imagery cool. mode, just take a deep breath and get back into your imagination space. And I'd like you to imagine, don't worry so much about how you're going to get there, but just imagine that you are achieving in your goal, you're getting closer. Imagine the first sort of getting started now and imagining the first tangible changes that you will notice in yourself as you're working on it. When would you notice in your day that things are a little bit better already and how would you notice that? What would that look like? Where are you when you're noticing those first immediate effects of knowing you're working at it? Who's with you? Are you on your own? What can you see here? How do you feel within yourself as you're doing those things and you're observing those feelings? And then imagine a little bit further into the future, maybe about, say, three months from now, if you can see that far ahead, three or six months. And you've had some consistency. You've been working goal. You've been making some progress. What did that progress look like over the weeks, the months? How does it feel now that things are moving in the direction you desire? And what are the key tangible things that you're noticing as you're going about your days that are better? And that could be something really physical or something mental or both, ideally. Just try and observe those feelings in yourself and how your body feels as you're going through emotions and noticing those positive effects. And then imagine a year from now, if you can look that far ahead. So you've cracked your goal. How does that achievement feel? And how do you feel in your own skin as you're looking out to the world through your own eyes, making that as vivid as possible, sort of a key moment where you're noticing it's been cracked and all the 
exciting after effects of that. What is your life like at the moment now as you're enjoying that positive hangover? <laughs> Don't think of gin and tonics now or beer. <laughs> John, I'm sorry to, to leave you. Um, I'm not sorry to bring you back, sorry, and interrupt you. Normally I would do this much like yeah. longer and leave you to enjoy it and embellish it much more. But how was that in comparison? It, it was like um, it was almost like a date with the future. If like nice. to explain it like that, yeah, like sitting in the future and thinking, and especially with you know the like what would it feel like looking out, who would be there, where would you be, what would you be doing? There was some really clear imagery that I was conjuring up as well, and it was really inspiring. You know, thinking about um, you know to get that fit. I mean, like. Being fit is just the greatest thing in the world. You know, you 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 just breathe forever. You sleep like a dead person. There's so many great things. So being that fit, and you know how I'd be move, like carry my body around. Yeah. So there was so much to hold on to actually when you asked all those questions. Yeah. So much to draw on, and then so much to update, because now yeah. that you've got that key future self, that post you, that update, that yes. you want, that alone in moments where things are getting difficult drawing on that for a few seconds as you're finding yourself in a challenging situation where you may be about to slip just fast forwarding to that for a few seconds and calling that to mind should give you enough in like in the moment motivation to crack the situation that is a challenge Mm. of course we would now talk about steps of how you would get there and imagine that see if we need any tweaking over the next few weeks or if it sits well with you. We would definitely incorporate what you've mentioned. This is very MI and fit. You've mentioned some past successes with the swimming. You know, you mentioned some obstacles there. What got in the way? I would have that conversation with you. How did you crack it? Could any of these ideas help you now? Let's imagine doing that now. And oops, there's another obstacle that you hadn't anticipated. How will you find a way through that in your imagination? And then crucially practicing it alongside something that will cue you every day of going through that future self imagery, the steps Mm. that you will take, tweaking them if you need to, working through the obstacle, ending on achievement, and then seeing the positive effect. So if I understand correctly, the so what we just did was like a little, little like a tiny piece of it. So we, we, exercise, yeah. Yeah, and then and then it, and then it moves forward into um, the execution. So it sounds like you've imagined like everything, and then you go into an execution stage. And so is that what you were explaining there, or is there more to the execution stage? There is more because there will be obstacles. So you're building into executions, not the processes of going through it smoothly, but acknowledging obstacles and learning how to tweak them on your own as well as you're using imagery, learning as you go along to update with new successes as well. Because as the weeks progress, you will find those little golden nuggets of things that have already gotten better, be that just your confidence has gone up since you know you've been working at it again. Building that into your daily imagery so you can draw on those immediate successes moments that will pave the way to that further away goal because for some people that might be really far removed from what they can reach and they might get discouraged if they imagine that so they need those bits to hold on to in between to see that they're progressing like you will and there'll be so many things to draw on for your goal because it is running and it is then the winning and what that winning and that feeling will energize for for the rest of the year to follow but also john are really important is things like um hitting a plateau and you might do that with exercise and you might do that as you talk about in your books in, in a dietary way as well for people who want to lose weight so there are really some ways of dealing with that very solution focused in mi and fit So if you do hit a plateau, thinking about those little golden nuggets we paved along the way, what has improved already? How has that already changed your life? How can you get more of those moments, create them, enjoy them? As you're imagining doing that, can you maybe have a little lookout for things that are actually not going so well right now where you can tweak and shake things up? So again, keeping a watchful eye on that as well using imagery. So, so endless, endless ways of supporting it long term as well, your progress and when things get tough. 
I mean, fascinating. And thank you for the demo. I think people were like, we got a few likes and some comments, very excited. And if you are watching this, share this now, share it. Um, so th- what I did want to ask you was uh, who can, so you offer training and yes. you know you can do that now. And I'm interested, if you just mentioned what the training involves and who can do it. Because we have a lot of coaches uh, in our network who are keen um, can you do it if you're not a coach? You know, what are the rules and the yes. terms and conditions? Yeah. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So, so I don't know how I do it, but the feedback has been so far. I do like this whole, I do the motivational part first, and then I pluck fit on and teach how to weave fit into that motivational interview. And what has been happening, Tom, so people have been using even motivation 20 years or so, feel like that part is so essential because we're peeling away the layers of the onion to get to the core value of the person of who they want to be again or who they want to strive to be if they can't draw on any past successes. So really they say it's sharpened their um, their tools, if anything, and extended them. Um, people said, I put it in a very good, understandable, compact format. So it's ready to use. They're running with it straight away as they come out of training. They're confident and, and use the imagery um, on top of that. Um, as we get to the fit part. So um, I train anybody um, basically that has an interest in health or behavior change, ideally maybe a little bit of coaching training already, or maybe they've done an MI course already, doesn't have to also have nutritionist students, dietitians that come in completely cold and haven't heard about behavior change. I mean, they heard about it, but not about techniques. And those people are not left behind. They're very much feeling like this is a really good way of learning MI and FIT. And we then move on to FIT where we actually um, talk about how to use the imagery, how to use the imagery for processes like we've just talked about, for goals like we've just talked about building up that future self, for dealing with emergency situation where we need self-control in the moment, mm-hmm. so where we're likely to slip, et cetera, for um, moments of plateauing um, later on as progress has been steady and so on, and, and then really very much teaching how to teach your clients and your patients this as a training so it's not so much a therapy it's more like a training that you t- the most evidence-based way of using mi and imagery to achieve their goals so yeah anybody any professional practitioner can come to the training and it's application like the application is just so so vast universal yeah uh and and so how do people get hold of you where they email me okay well i'll I'll put you i'll put your email in the in the in the the top of the thing um the comments and underneath or whatever so we're on youtube oh thank you yeah they can email me um and i have a website as well you put the website up on the website it has all the competences and it has the structure everything on there dates etc i think that so i've just kicked off the fit and then the next one is on the 8th of october so yeah and at the moment the core training is lifestyle change weight loss smoking cessation um getting fit uh physical and activity etc but I do also focus on a bit on mental health and busting anxiety provoking situations and using imagery for that. Sure. That's really useful. Um, yeah, we have a, we also have a, a eating psychology program and interestingly, a lot of our plants actually have from depression and anxiety. Yeah. It, I mean, I can say without even looking at studies that there's like a, a correlation and obviously it's you know you don't know which which is the chicken or the egg do you have a, do you do you have anything to that actually yeah go yeah absolutely. <laughs> so the thing is the reason why we do training um and we encourage people to join like professor jackie andrade said as well is so that you can deal with the comorbidities that come with higher bmi ranges you know people have obesity and have it for a long time may feel some you know other effects like depressive symptoms like anxiety or like you said people who may have been started to emotionally overeat etc so as the training really will um give you an understanding of how to manage that using excellent practitioner skills in the spirit of a mind fit so undoing the anxiety provoking situations dealing with depressive mood actually loads of people in the um, weight loss trial reported qualitatively um, afterwards um, when we asked them that their depressive mood had much improved because most of the imagery is so positive and empowering in terms of their self-efficacy confidence and motivation so so there were some really really actionable direct results there 
And um, I have anxiety busters, which are also really, really great. There's also a lot of anxiety about being hungry, maybe at first when you're starting to change your diet a little bit. Or, you know, that void when, when, you, when you are usually engaging with that cigarette and having that conversation. I mean, I'm thinking back to my chef and used to be an absolute chain smoker, you know. And I was just... Like, in the mouth I, every like, yeah. It's just like... <laughs> You know, how do I break this habit? Well, I'll just go to the, you know, to the lunchroom instead of standing outside in the parking lot, you know, behind the kitchen yeah. smoking. But it's that social element, it's that void. It's like, what? I'm missing out now. What am I going to do with this time? Using imagery to work to those things, through those things and putting strategies into place and so on. So that's why we encourage people to really train in this properly. Um, mm. And that's why we cover everything so that they come out being an excellent practitioner in the spirit of a mind fit. Uh, so I haven't actually asked a psychologist this since I read this study. So there's a study that I refer to in one of my webinars where we talk about the myths of, of low carb. Um, it's just, it, it gets a bad name sometimes. So there are a few, and this is what they did in Canada, and they put people on a low carb diet and they put them into groups, and but they'd measured like everything before they went on this trial. Yes. Yeah. And, and it was 12 weeks, so it wasn't very long, or three months, I mean, you know, a few days or 12 weeks, and they lost a ton of weight, and they improved every single health marker, like yeah, um, yeah. all the blood stuff and uh, BMI and abdominal circumference, the works. But one of the things they measured was the, is it the um, PHQ-9 score? Is that what it's called? The, oh, it's a, um, the, the, um, is that the anxiety or is that the, the well-being? The depression, it's the depression, depression yeah, yeah, the, score. It's, so, it rings a bell, yeah. Uh, okay. Well, so, so, well, so basically it's the score for self-assessment. And um, and so it, it goes up in fives. And from naught to five, you're like, fine. And then five to ten is light depression. So you're a bit unhappy. But but then after ten is you should be on medication because you're yeah. moderately, moderately depressed. And after 20, you are in big trouble and you need yeah. intervention. And, and, and after 12 weeks, with all the other blood data, they just this uh, PHQ-9 score, and 15% of the participants who, well, 15% of the participants who originally said they were above a 10 said that they had had come underneath a 10. So they were like either below 5 or below 10, which means they've gone from being like able to be prescribed drugs to being de-prescribed or whatever. Yeah. And what do, you, what do you put that down to? Well, that's the, that's the amazing thing about lifestyle change. You're changing the way you feel about problems, the way you approach problems, and that permeates into every area of your life. And if one thing improves, so if you can improve the weight or you can improve the smoking or you can improve the repressive symptoms, the other things will follow. And the key thing that I find in clients, participants, even when it's weight, it's always about mood, really. It's always about that freedom of movement that someone wants to gain back, that being pain-free or that feeling good and strong in your own body. And that can relate to exercise or weight or, or, or other um, illnesses. And actually chipping away at one of those elements in that cycle and, and doing the lifestyle change and, and doing that in a positive, productive way and people seeing results, that really does permeate um, into the comorbidities and can really improve that. And that's the beauty. It's so easy um, in a way if you have the right tools because you don't need medicines, you know, do this from a purely lifestyle change <laughs> point, really. Um, yeah. so I'm saying you don't need medicines. Obviously, in some cases where there's psychiatric illness, you might need um, some medication treatment if you're having acute episodes or something. But really... Mm -hmm over the long term. And if you have people who, who have comorbidities and they go for bariatric surgery or what have you, and, and they, um, they lose a lot of weight, they still have to learn how to adapt their lifestyle because as they come out of that surgery, they still have to eat in a certain way. And if they don't, they're risking their life, you know, yeah. um, by tricking that band that they have fitted or something. So yeah, there's a guy. <laughs> No, there's a guy called Dr. Robert Sivas. He's actually a Cape Tonian and he moved to, I think he lives in Florida, and a bariatric surgeon. And he's done over 10,000 um, cases where he's done the, the band or the staple or whatever. Um, but he has a, basically a food addiction, or he calls carbohydrate addiction clinic, in his surgery. Because he says, you know, even, even if I staple your stomach, like it's not going to cure the obesity you'll lose weight but you'll still be an obese person in your mind and that's what we want yeah you want that mindset shift you know and that's what reporting you know am i does 
do does affect that mindset shift but fit does it faster and a lot more intensively using the imagery and mm. people seem for them it seems to last you know they change inside out and mm. and that's really, really good to see and they become their own coach so to speak that's but, a really powerful thing because we didn't mention it earlier but i know that in your study you said that you got results after the intervention as well yeah, absolutely. So after the, the intervention, we withdrew after six months. We only gave them four hours of fit over six months. And at 12 months, they had no contact for six months. They were still losing. That's not a normal result to find in research studies. Normally, you find that people go straight back up again or they start slowly to go back up again after leaving an intervention. And that can be something as well established as weight loss just a slimming world, you know. Yeah. Um, this is, you know, keeping keeping at it and keeping the motivation going, and that becoming, you know, when you talk about your new life and your in your phases um, in your book, that is your yeah. new life. You know, you think differently. You know, you think differently about choices. You, the the thought about the brownie is not going to bother you anymore, or standing in front of the wine rack because you won't want it because you want the other thing more. Because we have trained, you have trained yourself. So what's that new pathway? And we're neglecting the old sort of dysfunctional route now and less effortful, you know, to do over time. And that's just the new you. And that's what you want, you know, like mm. that energy that you were describing, you know, the draw of that, that buzz will become so much stronger than anything that can get in the way. Yeah, I really love it. I love it so much because I think we get clients who come in and most of the clients who join, they want to white knuckle it. And I don't know if you know, like, but, the, but just like, I'm going to hold my breath until I reach my goal and then I'll scratch this off my list of things. And it just sounds so hard and unpleasant. And um, and so what I love about this. Thing that you would do, right? Yeah, yeah I'm just going to restrict and take away all Change the things everything. like that. Yeah. And so I love how how this really creates something inspiring to to work towards. I love it. I love your work. Thank you. Oh, that's so Lydia. great, John. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. So it's been a pleasure having you. And I'll pop the links into um, into the the post. So if you're watching this, you'll find them there. Just tell us what your website is. Oh, it's drlindasolbrick.com. Dot so com. Dr. Written, D-O-C, um, so written out, not just oh, the dog. Dog. Okay, cool. Dr. Right. Right. <laughs> awesome. Well, we'll um we'll definitely have to have you on again. Thank you for working with me on my, we'll have to on my keep running. Working on your goal, yeah. John. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Stay on our chat.